you know, at some point, that paper dollar that you have will have cost more to print the ink on that special paper than what the actual paper represents in its true value. Why? Because of hyperinflation. Perhaps the question might be, can this economic stimulus package and perhaps others that will likely follow actually lead to the hyperinflation that we have described in the book of Revelation? Let me try to answer it this way. Yes. Yes. Consider these recent headlines. Economic stimulus packages overdosing could ignite hyperinflation. Hyperinflation is a possibility, says Morgan Stanley. Obama's stimulus package will doom America. The collapsing U.S. economy, will the government turn to the printing press? Is the Fed's proposed Treasury's gambit playing with fire? Can European countries really go bankrupt? Answer, yes, and they will. How can I be so emphatic and even dogmatic about it? Because that's what the Bible says. How else will the world embrace the one world economic system that is imposed by the Antichrist? How is it that the United States of America would embrace a one world, United, one world economic system without the collapse of the U.S. dollar? It has to happen. I think of what Jesus said to the disciples. It's almost like it has to come to pass so that the end will come. I don't want to sound spiritually sadistic here, but I'm thinking, bring it on. I want to go home. I want to go home. <laughs> In other words, it needs to happen so that the Lord's return is imminent and even closer than what we might think in so much that it will come at an hour that we do not expect. It's also interesting to note that the book of Revelation tells us that with this one world economy, it will be cashless. Why? Because it will all be electronic. It's believed that the Antichrist will control the one world economy via the World Wide Web. And we're told, as we'll see in a moment, that people will not be able to buy or sell unless they have a mark. And we see this prophecy in Revelation chapter 13. Again, this is during the tribulation where it says of the Antichrist, in verses 16 through 18, he also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on or in his right hand or on or in his forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. If Anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is man's number, and his number is 666. Some have speculated that this 666 will be adopted and adapted in the World Wide Web. Some believe that the numeric equivalent for the Hebrew W is the number 6. So you have WWW. World Wide Web 666. Others, and we've had the privilege of having Frank Toyama uh, speak on this. He's well versed in this and, you know, talking about the possibilities with the barcode and the cashless society. He's been tracking it for a lot of years, as have I. But it's interesting that we're seeing this now, even now, come to pass. I mean, here's an actual photo of an actual implant. This, is, uh, this was implanted in a guy in Canada. By the way, the FDA has approved uh, microchip implants in humans to store medical data. Uh, this particular implant is sold that the user does not have to enter in his username or his, uh, uh, his uh, password. Because see, his hand, his forehand, is over the mouse. 
So the mouse can read via the infrared technology right into the chip and identify so he can go online and buy and sell. How convenient! <laughs> 2,000 years ago, John is describing something that even now we have the technology to do. I mean, you know, it, it seemed 25 years ago, this was not really, it was hard to kind of get your mind, and there was, you know, speculation abounding as to what's the mark of the beast? Ronald Reagan's the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> Barney is the Antichrist. <laughs> and they'd put, you know, the 666 into the name. Nah, no, stop it. 25 years ago, even 20 years ago, this seemed highly, you know, unlikely and didn't really seem possible. But today it's not only possible, it's probable. Do you realize that uh, it's not now even less than six months, everything's obsolete? Uh, I don't want to discourage you, especially those of you who are uh, embarking on a college education. Bless you, uh, you know, and I think that's great for you. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is that if you're going to a four-year uh, college to get a degree, the information that you'll be taught in year three, or uh, pardon me, in year one and two, will be obsolete by year three. <laughs> Oof, sorry. <laughs> Some of you are thinking about them student loans. <laughs> but it's true. Daniel's prophecy was that in the last days, knowledge would be increased. And are we not seeing that? You know, that the, the technology that they have today, it is mind-boggling. You know, I, I love technology. <laughs> That might come as a surprise to you, but I, I love I love PowerPoint. I love my little, you know, smartphone. <laughs> Smarter than me, I hate that, but I just like little gadgets, you know, the iPods. I mean, who would have thunk? You know, I, I come from the day, and I'm sure many of you can relate, where you used to have to get this cassette tape player. Now, for you young people, a cassette is a plastic <laughs> device. It's like a cartridge. You know, it came after eight track. I won't even go there with eight tracks, but. <laughs> then, it, you know, then it's CDs and then it's, you know, DVDs and now it's MP3s. And even that's, I mean, I have this little iPod and I can fit thousands of Bible teachings and sermons on it. It is amazing to me. I would have never thought 15 years ago that that could even be possible. I mean, I have several translations of the Bible on my phone. It's crazy. The, the, this laptop has got more information on it that, than I can even access. It's just crazy, the technology. So here's John describing for us in the revelation to him in the dictation to him by the Lord himself, who told him to write those things which will have taken place, are taking place, and will take place yet future. And here we are in the future, and the future is now. Almost 2,000 years later. The technology is in place, and all the Antichrist has to do is flick the switch. And that begins the Seven-year tribulation. Now, some of you are thinking, uh, wow, it's kind of heavy. It's kind of uh, scary. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, if this is scary to you, what are you going to do? Go hide in a cave somewhere? No. No. If this is terrifying to you, it would probably indicate that you're not ready for him and his return for you. And you can get ready so that you are ready when he comes. And I believe he's coming very soon. I believe he's even at the door. See, there's a dynamic here because what's happening with Bible prophecy is that it's happening very rapidly. 